Before we get into it, let's get something out of the way. The TIE Fighter is a terrible design. And I'm not alone in thinking this. Any engineer worth their salt will tell you exactly the same thing. Zero visibility on the sides and a frame held in place by two tiny stress points. This is asking for catastrophic failure. And even canonically, TIE Fighters are not the best made ships. They're disposable and cheap because, well, so are the pilots. And yet here in Squadrons, that feels oddly appropriate. And more than a little ironic that I feel like a freaking demon in this thing. Let's show them what we're made of. The incredible sound design helps with that. Star Wars sound effects are ingrained pretty hard into the culture, and you'll be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't recognize the sound of an X-Wing flying past, or a droid chirping in the background. So really, it's kind of an easy A here, but there is something viscerally engrossing about lining up a perfect bead on your target and letting fly with the sound of your laser turrets in your headphones. In fact, you'll be hard pressed to find a single match where you don't have that I have you now moment. Squadron shines in giving you these quick adrenaline pumping got ya moments. Either by finally taking down that one guy who's better than everyone else in the match, or by leveling an entire incoming enemy squadron before they even get a chance to fire. These moments are simply fun. It's just getting there that's a bit of a headache. I really want Squadrons to be one of those games you pick up for a quick match when you've only got about 10 minutes to spare. Something easy and fun that you can walk away from without too much drama. And for the most part, it almost has it. But between the easy anti-cheat system, the initial loading time, the animation, finding a match, and then waiting two minutes because there's always that one dumbass who doesn't know you can accept the loadout and begin the match now. And then another animation before the match starts. I'm not as eager as I was when I started this endeavor. It took just a bit too long to get here. I had to be a bit more invested than I wanted to be for a quick match. But I can get over that easily enough. After all, these matches are fun, and once it's all loaded and you're in the groove, why not have a few more matches instead of just one? But Squadrons pulls a 180, and instead of dropping you into the lobby for the next round, you get kicked right back to the main menu to start the process all over again. And this is baffling to me. Why would you not immediately throw me into a lobby with the same people? Let those who want new people drop out and let those people who work well together, or want revenge, stay in for round two. This was a system perfected back in 2009 with Modern Warfare 2. 11 years ago. Slap on a 35 second timer to change my loadout, apply the latest bling I earned, and let's go. I lied before. I don't want a quick match to whittle away 10 minutes of my life. I want an excuse to be hopelessly sucked into a Skinner box of fast-paced metagame play and not realize the sun came up three hours ago. Instead, I quit after the first round because I would actively pay money to never hear the match starting alarms ever again. The extended tutorial single player campaign is decent enough. It's a series of scenarios that let you run the gamut of the different ship choices, and for the most part it's pretty entertaining. But I do feel like there was probably supposed to be a deeper communication system at work with the various NPCs you end up talking with. Their unnatural pauses after certain lines of dialogue makes me think that they were going to have multiple choice narrative prompts to choose from during conversations, but the feature got scrapped halfway through, and now we just get to hear the best dialogue tree play out. Which isn't to say it's a bad thing, but none of these characters are particularly memorable. 
squadron I've seen. And so I find myself listening to them more for fear of missing out on something than actually caring about their story arcs. But dogfights are missions. You're going to be dealing with what is quite possibly one of the worst control schemes I have ever used. If you're on a controller, the left thumbstick controls thrust and roll, while the right thumbstick controls pitch and yaw. And the far, far away Star Wars galaxy seems to exist in a realm without inertia. So TIE Fighter or X-Wing, your ship will stop on a dime, or max out its speed in a little under a quarter of a second. Which leads to these moments of what you think are adept dogfighting maneuvers, only to watch a kill cam where you've quickly flown 10 feet, stopped dead, turned, and flown another 10 feet while your opponent calmly sat off to your left, pelting you with laser fire. In practice, this means that the vast majority of your flight is done solely with your right thumb, with your left thumb periodically flicking to go faster, slower, or come to an unintentional dead stop. It understandably takes some getting used to, but it isn't impossible. You just have to know it a little bit better than the guy you're flying against. Which isn't that hard most of the time. And if you win the match, you'll likely level up and be gifted a handful of currencies to tweak your starfighter or change the helmet of your character. Which you will likely want to do, as you only seem to have a handful of unchangeable faces to choose from when you create them in the first place. Still, there are options. Like this black helmet with a red stripe, or these black helmets with a red stripe. But I'm not going to complain here. Squadrons is happily, gleefully free of microtransactions and loot boxes. And all this stuff is simply earned in-game through achievements, or purely through playtime. And I'm not exactly proud of it, but... That legitimately gets this game a lot of leeway on my part. I'm willing to forgive an awful lot simply because this is an EA game that isn't constantly sending me notifications that I could spend $20 and unlock the ultra awesome Sith Lord Mega Holocron that lets me use a Darth Vader skin on my character, even though it would make no sense here whatsoever. I am, frankly, grateful that I have a simple, basic, untainted Star Wars themed spaceship shooter to mess around in when I feel a little bored. It's just important to set your expectations accordingly. If you're looking for a feature rich space simulator, this isn't for you. For people who want adrenaline fueled FPS style death matches in spaceships, you might want to wait for a steam sale, but you can get some good times out of this with your friends. But if you've ever dreamed about crawling into an X-Wing to fight for the New Republic, this game is, despite its shortcomings, worth it. You will have that moment. And it'll sound better than you could possibly imagine.